What have I got here tonight? It's a little GPS unit. It's the L80 from Quectel. And um, one thing that's interesting about this little guy is unlike most of these small GPS units, and this one is indeed pretty small, uh, here's a 20 cent piece by comparison. So there's an Australian 20 cent piece. And, uh, well, the thing that's interesting about it is that it's actually on a 0.1 inch pitch. So uh, it seems like it's going to be relatively easy to make a little uh, breakout board for this thing. Uh, so, yeah, rare for a GPS of this small to have a 0.1 inch pitch connection like this. So that opens up some interesting possibilities with maybe even using a bit of strip board or Vero style board on a tenth inch pitch and uh, somehow making a homebrew breakout board for this thing to connect it say to a Raspberry Pi. So let's give that a go. The other thing that's interesting about this device is that uh, if you look at the pinout here, all the connections that would be of interest uh, in most cases fall on this side. So uh, we've got uh, obviously ground and uh, VCC, the 3.3 uh, volts nominally that we can apply here a connection for a backup battery to keep the real-time clock ticking over, the highly accurate one pulse per second output, very useful for, say, creating a Stratum 1 NTP server on a Raspberry Pi, for instance, not to allude to a future project too much, and uh, then the serial input and output for uh, controlling the device and uh, setting its board rate and also for receiving the NMEA style strings that uh, contain the position information altitude speed time etc whereas on this side of the board there isn't all that much going on uh, in fact nothing that we absolutely need so there is another ground here it's the option of connecting an external antenna there's a reset pin, there's a not connected pin. Uh, I think this thing uh, is an output that uh, changes state depending on whether an external antenna is detected. And uh, a timer pin, not quite sure what that does, but it's uh, related to the real time clock. In fact, I think it, it might have the ability to, uh, you can set this up to wake up periodically and, and acquire a fix so that it, it has a very quick time to uh, first fix. Anyway, this side, not so necessary for basic interfacing, uh, but this side is. Uh, so presumably with uh, a 0.1 inch pitch between these things and uh, only really needing to worry about connecting up this side, it should be quite easy to break this uh, device out. Typically, when you want to create breaks in strip board like this, uh, one would use a, a drill bit and uh, make a break in it like that. Or you can get a bit more classy and get a tool that's made for the job that uh, has a little tip like this and a nice plastic handle that uh, stops you from uh, stripping your skin off on your fingers from the uh, sharp drill blade and uh, take a, a notch out of it like that. But um, I'm going to try something different because I don't really want to dig uh, holes out of this like this and I want a clean straight edge so that my GPS can just sit nicely on that and uh, yeah the, the track protrudes 
just a little bit underneath so that it uh, contacts these uh, these gold pads, um, but but ends in a nice sharp crisp line. So here's what I've uh, come up with: a bit of um, permanent marker to act as a resist. I use these uh, Lumi Color or Lumo Color by Statler uh, permanent markers. Uh, this is a, a black marker and it has quite a fine tip and uh, yeah this generally stands up pretty well uh, to uh, as a resist to etchant I use uh, ferric chloride and uh, yeah you get a, a little bit of etching through the, the thinner parts uh, where, where this doesn't come on real thick um, but in general it does a good job so uh, yeah Here's the idea. Put a bit of that down where we want the copper to remain and we'll etch the rest off. And uh, then hopefully we'll just be able to solder that on like that and have a uh, neat little breakout board for this GPS unit. So I'm going to go off and etch this board now and uh, come back with the uh, finished product. Uh, well, that was a bit of a fail all round. Um, for starters, my ferric chloride solution was very, very, very weak, so I was pushing it a bit. And uh, it's also very cold in here, and uh, as we come into winter, the uh, etchant is just working so much slower, so I might need to look at ways to heat, heat it up. Uh, but the other issue I think is with etching the strip board is that it really got in and uh, attacked the, uh, the bit where I put the resist and I think the issue there was that in order to speed the etchant up I uh, was rubbing it with some cotton wool to sort of keep the etchant flying around here but unfortunately it might have uh, rubbed off some of the resist in the process but also because the board is full of holes it's very easy for the etchant to get in through the holes and kind of start to to etch out from the center of, of the holes so yeah a bit of a fail there but I think the idea deserves another shot so I will try on another night It's another night, so time to give it another go. This time around, I put some captain style tape on the back of the circuit boards, and I tried two different approaches. So on one, I just used the Lumo Color marker as a resist, and on the second PCB, pictured at the top on this photo, I used a little bit of captain tape as well just cut the size of the resist so I applied the captain tape and then used a, a sharp knife to get a nice straight edge following the resist pattern. So this is what it looks like the other side and this is the top side without the captain tape this is the top side with the captain tape and here's what the finished product will hopefully look like Here's what happened after etching. As you can see, the piece of PCB that had the tape as well as the resist pen turned out really well with nice sharp definition. The piece that only had the Lumicolor marker acting as resist, on the other hand, was etched very poorly. So the lesson, it seems, is to use some kind of tape if you're trying to etch a board according to some kind of pattern which really severely limits the kinds of things that you can etch using this technique and in many cases it might be easier just to make a toner transfer PCB. Oh well, you live and learn. I pressed on with the good PCB and soldered the GPS module to it. This worked quite well, although it was fairly difficult to 
solder the castellated vias to such thick traces of the barrow board. I added a right angle via to handle the connections to the GPS and a 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor to the VCC and ground pins before finishing the board off with some screws and standoffs for mounting.